Mm-hmm. Morning, everybody. How are we doing today? Y'all stand to your feet. We're going to sing some praises to Jesus this morning. Happy Mother's Day to all of our moms in the house. Blessed be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be. 
sing those words, but those words are, are real life. Um, losses happen. God, we thank you for being with us. Thank you for your peace. We thank you that we know we're going to see those that we lose in another life with you. We love you. In the darkness we were waiting Without hope or without light Till from heaven you came run There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prompt To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt Praise the Father. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Praise the Spirit. Three in one. God of glory. Majesty. Praise forever to the King of kings. To reveal the kingdom come and to reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in yourself, you saw to the other side, knowing this was our salvation, Jesus for our sake you died.
all of heaven held its breath till the stone was rolled for good before the Lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who rose to the Father are restored oh, and the church of Christ was born here today. Again, it's Mother's Day and we're so appreciative of all you mothers. I want y'all to have a seat and we have a video that our kids made just for you. Community Baptist. Um, she works for a business. Feel good. Sleeping. <laughs> she is really good at art. I mean singing. Saying to meet Tom Holland. Disneyland. I would go to the beach with her. Chicken. Um, chilies. Yogurt. Vegetables. Because she made me, and because she cares for me. Uh, she cares for me and she loves me. Because she's kind, nice, sweet to me. She is kind and sweet. Welcome to uh, Community Baptist Church. We're so glad you're here. Uh, if you're not connected already, you can use this QR code to Put it in your phone and get all the information about our church. Get connected and know what's going on here. We also have an app which you can download um, that has all of our announcements. It has access to giving your prayer requests. Anything you need to know about the church, you can find in our app. Also, next Sunday, is that right, May 15th, in view of a call, Sean Torrance will be sharing in our morning service. And immediately after the service, we'll be voting to call him as our youth pastor. Vacation Bible School is coming up June 20th through the 24th. 
Um, we still need help. If you haven't volunteered already, please talk to Candace and she can get you hooked up. And I have one more that we don't have a slide for. In May, we will be having a diaper drive for the McDivitt's daughter. They're the ones who came and shared with our church about their path in adoption. Their daughter is going to be adopting twins. And so we are having a diaper drive in May. Just be watching for more details about that. Will y'all pray with me? Father, thank you so much for this day, for your people here gathered in your house. Um, I know it just brings joy to you to see us sitting here, and we're here because of you. We're not here just to see our friends. We're not here uh, just to celebrate Mother's Day. We're here to worship you, to draw closer to you, to serve you. Lord, that's what we're here in life for, and I just pray that everything we do would bring you glory. Let this service, this time, this message that Pastor Johnny brings to us bring you glory, and everything we do as we leave from here, Lord. May it just shine your light to this world that needs to see it so much. In Jesus' name, amen.
You know, moms are incredible. Uh, moms are, sorry. I watched that three or four times thinking that I'd be okay now. <laughs> but um, moms are uh, encouragers and uh, dream dream creators. And uh, they push us forward when, uh, you know, other people might want to tear us down or hold us back. And um, <clears throat> the song... Uh, that we're going to sing. I don't think was written for this, but first time I heard it, I imagine uh, my mom speaking this over me. And I hear it, you know, my wife talks to my kids. And if I uh, can get it together, <laughs> hope it speaks to you this morning. Strange as it sounds, extraordinary magic follows you around. And the camera can't catch it, you won't see it in the mirror. If I say, Look behind you, you turn around, it disappears. But I see it, I see. I swear I do, I see extraordinary magic in you. Out of thin air you appear in my life Like a burst of technicolor in a world of black and white When my heart was locked Inside a box, you reached inside, and now I see the future when I look into your eyes. I see, I see, I swear I do, I see extraordinary magic in you. And I know that miracles happen. Who cares what they say? Cause you're nothing short of a miracle Waking up over and over every day So I'll keep my eyes open Odd and amazed and if you start to doubt it i'll remind you of the million ways i see it i see it i swear i do i see extraordinary magic in you morning. Robert, thank you for that. Yeah. Church ain't for crying, but I uh, appreciate that, man. That was awesome. Moms. You know what? Before I go into my little history lesson, 
Can y'all pop that video real quick so that we can ruin uh, Robert's moment? Dear Lord, I come to you today to rebuke the spirit of squaring up with my son today, dear God. Dear God, for his attitude has been testing my gangster, Lord. Dear Father, I ask that you place your hands upon this child, dear God, for he does not know that I am about that life, Lord. Oh, Father, I have one more request. Can you please send the spirit of patience upon me, dear God? Because I'm about to lose my mind up in here, up in here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. <laughs> Sorry, Robert. But I know that's how many moms feel. Uh, even though you see them grow up and go away and live their life. Before that, it was a lot of that. Up in here. Up in here. In 1907, Anna Jarvis of Philadelphia held a memorial service at her late mother's church in Grafton, West Virginia. Her mother had organized women's groups to promote friendship and health. She wanted to do something special for her mom. Just within a few years, almost every state in the country was observing the day. So in 1914, President Woodrow Wilson made it a national holiday. It is observed on the second Sunday of every May, Mother's Day. Over time, the custom was to present the mother with either a red or pink carnation. A white carnation was worn to represent a mother who is no longer with us. This morning, we are presenting all mothers present with a pink carnation and wish to thank you for cradling life. And to always be nurturing to not only our own kids and grandkids, but to others' kids and grandkids. So we thank you, moms. If your mom is here, could you come up and grab a carnation? One per mom. Because some of y'all have 18 kids. Come on up here. You can be an adult, too. Your mom ain't here. My mother-in-law is. Oh. Levi. Okay, go ahead. If your kids aren't here, we're going to get you a carnation too, okay? Tabitha, you can only have one. There's plenty up here. Did somebody give one to Miss Sylvia? You got one? Somebody, hey, go get, go get Miss Sylvia. Oh, there you go, there you go. He got it. Go for it, brother. Miss Alice. Oh, and um, Colton, did you get one for your mom? Okay, just checking. We also have this really cool gift for you. For those of you that like Texas Hold'em, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. These are uh, labeled promises from God for women. And uh, like this one says, you are truly a wonderful person. Sometimes we just need those reminders. First Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.1, I pray that God will be kind to you and will bless you with peace. There's a bunch of them. Be cool if there was 52 of them, right? But we're not sure. But every mom will get one of these two. I need uh, Jonathan. Can somebody else help us pass these out to all the moms? Give them to all the females. We got plenty. So grab a few. Brody, get up here. <laughs> Levi, get up here. Y'all pass them out. Every mom, every female gets one. If you're not sure, Did everybody, every female get one? Miss Terry, did you get one? All right. I wish I could take credit for ordering these, but uh, thank you, Candace. 
But uh, we don't want you to leave empty handed. We got plenty. I debated on doing this next thing before I get into my message, but I, I felt led to do it, and, and Robert started it, so. Um, I believe in my heart that when you pray for something that aligns with God's will, he gives us the desires of our heart. That's scripture. That's Bible. And I believe in my heart, not to be charismatic, but I believe praying in my heart that next Mother's Day, Courtney, you're going to be a mama. I want you to have this. I want you to have this. Courtney and Mitchell have been praying and praying and praying for, uh, for them to have a baby. And uh, this is for you because your baby's coming, okay? <laughs> Amen. Robert, your, your song made me do that. I was debating. But um, hey, sometimes we just got to keep praying. Keep praying, keep praying. Don't be praying to win the lotto. But if you do, don't forget 10%. <laughs> I know uh, Richie Rich won uh, the Kentucky Derby yesterday. Uh, man, that's amazing. That is an amazing, amazing, what an underdog, literally. That horse wasn't even in the race Thursday. He wasn't added to the race until Friday morning. Any Kentucky Derby fans out there? Man, can you believe that? I mean, this guy was at 80 to 1 odds. Not sure what 80 to 1 means, Josh, but it's, I'm not sure, but that's a lot, of, that's a lot to 1. But uh, it's an amazing thing, and, and man, uh, I guarantee you they, they believed. They didn't enter that race hoping just to participate in the race. They entered the race thinking, hey, I'm going to win. And in the end, they won. And in the end, we win. <laughs> we win. We're on the winning side. We're on, we're on Team Jesus, and we win. Come on, with you. yeah, that's right. Um, we need to pray for Doug Childers and his family. Uh, he just recently lost his mom. And uh, the, the timing, it's tough, it's tough. But he's so poetic and he's such, a, he's such a pillar of strength that I love how he put it in Facebook where he said, um, you know, even though you expect it and it's coming, it's, it's never easy. Uh, and it doesn't get easy. And uh, so, Doug, we're praying for you and your family, your lovely family, and... and, and, and uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to see her again. I'm pretty sure. And I don't even know her, but I'm pretty sure. But, um, you know, I too hold the memory of my mother near and dear to my heart. At two weeks old, she embraced me as her own. She already had six adult children of her own. And at the time, 12 grandchildren. So, yes, I was an uncle immediately upon arriving into that family. Even with a large family already in place, she had room in her heart for one more. Although she whipped the fire out of me quite a bit, uh, I wasn't allowed in ladies' Bible studies. Oh, yes, I was. <laughs> I'm eternally grateful, and I never said this publicly. But I'm eternally grateful for my biological mother who could not have picked a better mom for her child. So she did well. Once again, thank you, mothers, for continuing this awesome legacy of motherhood. I don't envy you. I can see y'all praying that prayer up in here, up in here. I mean, it's like, woo. You know that boy get the fire beat out of him. But that ain't on video. <clears throat> Almost since the very beginning, the enemy has been attacking women and her children. Hello. 
Since mankind was created in the image of God, there was nothing that Satan hated more than the offspring of God's most precious creation. From the very first family, we see how the enemy wasted no time in coercing Cain to murder his brother Abel. Eve's first child murdering her second child. What an unbelievable set of events that the enemy has inflicted on God's creation from day one. He wasted no time. Fast forward approximately 1,300 years, give or take a couple of centuries. You know, when man gets involved with timelines and things like that, we mess things up, don't we? When we get involved with stuff, we mess it up. You know, God has a timeline, and thank God it ain't us handling and pulling those strings. But 1,300 years, give or take a century or two. But we know it was at least a thousand years after creation when the Exodus occurred. Before I read Exodus 2, I'll be in Exodus 2, verse 1 this morning. In Exodus 1, a new king had emerged and noticed that there are just too many Jews and decided to work them hard with brick and mortar, but yet they kept multiplying. Let me tell you something, fellas, for those of us that work hard every day. We labor in the sun every day. Notice how I said us. We're never too tired to be fruitful and multiply. Come on, amen. I'm telling you, I'm just, hey, 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 we're in church, right? Hey, the schools are teaching them something. As early as kindergarten, they're trying to trick them into thinking, you don't know what you are yet, a boy or a girl. So why can't the church say that God created sex between a husband and his wife, and it's a beautiful thing. Hello. Anything outside of that is sexual immorality. We can teach our kids that, and we can talk about it in church, because if we don't, they will. Are you with me? So these Jews were multiplying in spite of this Pharaoh saying, if I work them hard enough, they'll be too tired to multiply. (laughs) They were like rabbits. They just kept growing and growing. Let me give you a side note. You mess with God's people and bad things are going to happen to you. Hello. Jesus, this ain't in my notes, it's free. Jesus said on, when Paul or Saul on the road to Damascus, he takes it personal. He said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Saul was actually going to Damascus to arrest some people, possibly even Paul or or Saul ordered the execution of the first martyr, Stephen. So so Paul was either going to arrest him to kill them or arrest him to torture them. And Jesus took it personal. He said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Just remember, you mess with God's people and bad things are going to happen to you. That includes if we mess with each other, Just, just a little free one. This right here can be a lesson going that route. God loves his children, even those that reject him. Unfortunately, for those that reject him, they will suffer the eternal consequences. Fast forward to today, we are now God's children. We are believers. We're followers of Christ. He embraced us. We embraced him back. Those of us that have embraced his son, Jesus, he is now our Lord and Savior. We are his children. Our lives have been transformed, and I'm not talking about lip service. You see, if there's no transformation, if all you do is sound good, if all you do is sound good, we're not tricking anybody. (laughs) Remember, uh, maybe I said it last week. I'm not sure when I said it. But I said you can, it's a quote from Dawson McAllister in the 80s. You can... Con a con, you can fool a fool, but you can't kid a kid. Kids know. They know. Kids know if you're for them or not. They know. So when they come home and say, Miss so and so don't like me, chances are they're just probably complaining. Or chances are they're not. You just never know. 
Side note, another one. We're not tricking God for certain. Please understand that Jesus himself states in Matthew 7, verse 21, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Again, a lesson within a lesson. Don't mess with God's people. Don't mess with God's children, for such is the kingdom of heaven. So this Pharaoh wants to exterminate these Jews because they are multiplying. They are being fruitful in spite of their gruesome labor. So now this Pharaoh decides to take it a step further. This is all in Exodus chapter 1. First he ordered the Hebrew midwives that if a Hebrew boy is born, to kill him. The daughter may live, but the boy has to die. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a government that endorses the killing of babies? <laughs> Can you imagine? Must be a godless pharaoh, a pagan pharaoh. That wouldn't happen in America, would it? Well, the Hebrew midwives, because of their fear of God, allowed the boys to live. When this didn't work, Pharaoh then ordered all his people, commanded them to throw every Hebrew son into the Nile River. Now let's read Exodus chapter 2. Now a man from the family of Levi married a Levite woman. Woman. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was beautiful, she hid him for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a papyrus basket for him, coated it with asphalt and pitch. She placed a child in it and set it among the reeds by the bank of the Nile. Then his sister stood at a distance in order to see what would happen to him. Pharaoh's daughter went down to bathe at the Nile River while her servant girls walked along the riverbank. Seeing the basket among the reeds, she sent her slave girl to get it. When she opened it, she saw the child, a little boy, crying. She felt sorry for him and said, this is one of the Hebrew boys. Then his sister, the baby's sister, Moses, said to Pharaoh's daughter, should I go and call a woman from the Hebrews to nurse the boy for you? Go, Pharaoh's daughter told her. So the girl went and called the boy's mother. The Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child and nurse him for me and I will pay your wages. So the woman took the boy and nursed him. When the child grew older, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter he became her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. Father God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for mothers. Thank you for this mother who was, I don't know if she was obedient. I don't know if you told her to put her in the Nile River. But Father, she had faith. Help us this morning. Help us to honor women. Help us to honor mothers, not just on Mother's Day. In Jesus' name, amen. The mother of Moses, think about this for a minute or two with me. You're a mom. The ruling established has ordered the execution of your child simply because of his nationality, specifically because he's a boy. You see, in those days, you didn't have the option to self-identify. <laughs> you had two biological differences. You had a boy or a girl. You either had an extra appendage or you had a uterus. Real simple science. There was no choices to be made. Biology did it for us. Somebody said, you know, you're crossing the line in politics. No, politics crossed the line in the biblical worldview. I'm just going by scripture. I'm going by what it says. Okay, it did not say those boys that self-identify as boys. It said a boy, specifically a Hebrew boy. Really simple. I trust the science. So the mother of Moses made a monumental decision to save her child, her baby boy. I believe she made the choice that many mothers have made over the years to do what is best for their child. Obviously, Moses' mother is exceptional. She had faith. At the very least, she had faith that her son would be rescued and spared the demise that occurred to so many other Hebrew baby boys. It is believed that the wailing of moms was heard throughout the land. 
when baby boys were taken from their mothers. Can you imagine? Can you imagine, moms? Some of y'all moms will probably gladly say, but can you imagine you, moms, having your child taken from you and thrown into the crocodile-infested Nile River? And Lord knows what else have you. If you've ever been to the Nile, that's not just a river. That is a living, breathing animal, that Nile River. This is the favor of God. God had a plan. God had an unrevealed will. He used a mountain-sized amount of faith in a woman, a simple woman of three, to fulfill his purpose, and that's to usher his people to be delivered out of the hands of Pharaoh. Although her name is not mentioned in the Exodus 2 story, her name is mentioned in Numbers chapter 26 and verse 59. It's like a genealogy. Let's go there for a second. Real quick. 2659. The name of Abram's wife was Joshebed, a descendant of Levi, born to Levi in Egypt. She bore to Amram Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. So now we know her name is Joshebed. See, because sometimes in scripture, you know, people will be like, well, it doesn't say that. Well, it might say it over here somewhere. Just got to do some Bible study, do some research, do a little reading. Just a few pages over and you get to, oh, oh, I wonder if that's the same Amram. I wonder if that's the same Levi. Well, it all adds up. It all connects. She had faith. Joshebed, extraordinary woman. She wouldn't allow for her baby boy to be thrown in the Nile River. So she placed him there, not knowing what would become of him. But she had to have mountain-sized faith to know that the God of the heavens would watch over him. That's tough, ain't it? That's tough. This was a defenseless three-month-old baby that she put in that rushing Nile River. And we were like a bunch of crybabies when we send our kid off to boot camp as a grown man, can you imagine how this mother felt? Can you imagine? Let me read to you verse 5 and 6, and let me do some little emphasis here. Pharaoh's daughter went down to bathe at the Nile. While her servant girls walked along the riverbank, seeing the basket among the reeds, she sent her slave girl to get it. When she opened it, she saw the child, a little boy crying. She felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew boys. Are you catching what's happening? The daughter of the man that ordered the execution of that same baby. Are you seeing what God's doing here? Don't mess with his people. Are you seeing what God's doing here? He's saying, oh, Pharaoh, you want to kill my people. You want to kill my male babies. I tell you what, what I'm going to do to you, Pharaoh, not only is my deliverer going to be raised in your house, but he's going to show you, I'm going to show you great and mighty things through him. Thank you. <laughs> you see where this is going? You see who is rescuing the baby Moses? The very daughter of the man who ordered the extermination of Hebrew baby boys. And she had compassion for him. So who does Miriam go get? <laughs> Joshebed, the mother of Moses. Not only is the biological mother of Moses able to nurse her own child. <laughs> this one's good. <laughs> this one's awesome. They go get Moses' mom so that she can nurse the baby that she just found in the river and it just so ha coincidentally just so happens to be the biological mom of Moses. Oh, and here's the kicker. She's going to get paid to nurse her own baby. 
Tell me God ain't in the details. Tell me God isn't orchestrating something. Not only is you going to raise him in your home, but you're going to pay the mama who had faith to watch over her baby boy. Hello. That's how my God works. You're going to pay. You're going to pay. You can't make this stuff up. God has a plan. He has a revelation for each of us. For, for his plan for each of us is so massive, so incredible, so remarkable. We can't even fathom. We need to call on God like Jeremiah did. Call unto me and show me great and mighty things which I do not see or I, can't, I do not know or I can't feel, I can't touch. And he'll do it. Call on him. Courtney and Mitchell, call on him. And he'll show you great and mighty things. I've seen it happen. In the last several days, a Supreme Court draft, Supreme Court ruling, not, not a ruling, a draft was released in which the Supreme Court may make a ruling overturning Roe v. Wade. Half the country is in an uproar. Imagine, imagine wanting babies to live out of the mother's womb, causing an uproar. Not in America, not women's health. Oh, but it's political. It's not political to me. We got people trying to have babies. And half the country wants to murder them. Tell me the difference between Pharaoh and America. As a matter of fact, as a whole, 65 million babies later since Roe v. Wade, tell me, tell me in comparison, how do we know any better than Pharaoh? <laughs> Not even close. Yeah, we need to own it. We need to speak up. Too many guys sitting, standing where I'm standing on Sunday mornings would much rather have butts in the seats and speaking truth for fear that those Butts in the seats will leave. It's murder. It's murder. It's not women's health. That's a, that's a charade. That's a mockery. Life is beautiful. And we need to teach that to our young girls. So many disturbing scenes that I've witnessed, mostly on social media. It's no longer, it's never been about women's health care. It's something far more sinister. I believe the attack on women and children is on the rise, masqueraded in a narrative that sounds good. I have seen protesters that have signs that say, I wish my mom had aborted me. I don't... I, that, that's... that's psychopathic comments and they'll get in applauds and standing ovations and it all started in the garden Genesis 3 verse 15 watch this I will put hostility between you and the woman between your seed and her seed he will strike your head and you will strike his heel now many theologians a lot smarter than me claim that this passage is the first mention of prophecy of Jesus I, I agree with that, but I'm not smart enough to argue either way. But notice how hostility between the enemy and the woman and between her seed and his seed is clearly mentioned in Genesis 3 and verse 15. Hostility. Moments, perhaps minutes, after Adam and Eve disobeyed God and were kicked out of the garden... This is when it was stated, Genesis chapter 3. So from almost the moment of, be, of creation, it's on. Humanly speaking, life begins the moment of conception inside the woman's womb. Science agrees, but politics gets in the way. Something miraculous happens the moment one single cell organism, pay attention kids, one single cell organism meets another single cell organism. And when they combine in the woman's womb, 
something happens. Science can't reduplicate it. They can't. They think they can. They think they can through some cloning process or they do some DNA. But still, these two have to connect. I don't need to get into into any more biology because it is church. Okay? So something happens. Something begins. When the Virgin Mary conceived a child, instantly, at that very moment, the human Jesus began. And for nine months, she cradled the Savior of the world in the womb. Just like every one of us that has ever existed and exists today. You are not a mistake. I've been seeing a lot of posts about what about what about kids that are growing up in the foster care system or poverty or they're abused or they're neglected or nobody wants them or nobody likes them. I'm like, you're talking about a very small percentage, first of all. <laughs> all right. Right now in the state of Texas, there's something like 150,000 kids in the, wel- in the welfare system in, in CPS. Count up how many abortions we've had this year alone. Come on, man. Come on. That's like saying, don't be, don't be having no more black and Hispanic babies because they're going to grow up poor and criminals. That's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. They're saying, hey, Johnny, if more of your people are born, you're going to be part of a government system. So we need to exterminate you. We need to throw you in the River Nile. No basket, no papyrus. Are you picking up what I'm throwing down? This wasn't going to be a pro-life message, but you know what? I kind of like life. I kind of like life. You're not a mistake. Kids, you're not a mistake. You know how many times kids blame themselves for the divorce of their parents? Those of you in the education field, how many times do you hear that when your kids talk to you? Kids, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Adults do adult things. I don't care if they say it's your fault. They made a choice. They made a decision. I don't want to get into if it was a good one or not. That's, that's between them and their maker. But it's their fault. It's not your fault. If your mom and your dad have gotten divorced, it's not your fault. You're not the mistake. You're the blessing. You're you're the thing that God gave your mom and dad as treasures. Because until you're a parent, you don't know pain. You don't know when your kids hurt how much you hurt. You don't know. You don't know until that happens. When little Susie says that your little Susie is not pretty, (laughs) it hurts. It hurts. Now, if Billy Joe Slushhead tells your son that he's not very handsome, a lot of times that is true. You can believe that one. But you're not a mistake. You're here for a reason. I think way back in the day, a young lady who already had several children prior made a decision to have yet another child. And somehow, some way, she must have known that this child was going to be different. And so she placed him in a basket and delivered him to an old woman named Francisca Reyes Martinez. Now, by no means am I comparing myself to Moses. The only similarities me and Moses have is he got thrown into the now river. I got thrown into the Rio Grande. Only about five people responded to that. It's okay to be politically incorrect. Should I laugh? He has a plan. God had a plan. My mama, I told Robert this morning, I'm serious. 
I'd be five, six, seven, eight years old. My mama would tell her friends, my boy's going to be a preacher. Before the Holy Spirit even had any knowledge of it. He wasn't even in the picture yet. I know that sounds sacrilegious. God was in it from the beginning, but she must have had something in her that said, this boy is going to be a preacher, not a criminal, not a statistic, not, not a stereotype. This boy, I grew up in the hood. I grew up with gunshots. It's funny how I grew up in a neighborhood with a bunch of gunshots. Living out in the country, you hear gunshots all the time, but that's not the hood. I don't know. I guess if you're shooting at coyotes, it's different than shooting at people. I don't know. I guess there's a big difference there. But God had a plan. He had a plan for me. He had a plan for you. Joshebed had to have known this young lady already had other children, had a third child. She must have known that this child was special. He was unique. He was different. This child is going to make a difference. She, she had to have known something. So she made efforts to make sure that he is going to live so she placed him in that basket, put him in the Nile River. The deliverer was delivered to the only household where he could have survived. <laughs> God had a plan for Moses, and it started with Joshebed. My deliverer will be raised in the very household of the Pharaoh, is what God must have said. He will grow up with the Egyptians. He will learn their ways. And then he will deliver my people out of their bondage. 2,000 years ago, another little teenage girl gave birth to a little boy named Jesus. And she mothered this child. She cradled him in her womb for nine months. She raised him just like any other mother would. She watched him grow up into the man that he would become. She was there when he was arrested. She was there when he was beaten. She was there when he was mocked. She was there when he was spit on. She was there when they murdered him. But she was there when he arose from the grave. She was there. She was there. She had to have known that her child would be special as the savior of mankind. Why? Because life is beautiful. Kids, life is beautiful. Life is hard. And it can be so many other things. But it's still a blessing to breathe God's air. You're not just taking up space. I love life. I love doing life with my family and my church family. It's a good, good life. There isn't a better life than to live a life with Jesus and his people. And to go eat. I'm going to go eat me some good food here in a little bit. We already had some great food over here. Thank you, fellas, for your labor. Thank you for honoring our moms. Thank you for getting up at the butt crack of dawn on a Sunday morning to come fry some turkey bacon and eggs and everything else. I made some flour tortillas with some potato and egg and bacon. Well, the lady at the thing over there did, but I went and picked it up. Hey, some of them brought fruit. They didn't grow the fruit. They didn't do nothing but did the same thing I did. But we did it to honor you moms. I think we should do it every Sunday. What do you think, ladies? You are okay with that? Okay. It ain't happening, but but it's a good life. There isn't a better life. Once again, thank you, moms. Thank you for your nurturing ways. Young ladies all across our great land are missing out on one of the greatest gifts to a woman, and that is to have a child. I believe it's something. You know, somebody said, don't be chauvinistic. You seem like the type that wants nothing but a bunch of, you want your wife to just be barefoot and pregnant. Not true. I bought her some shoes. Some flip-flops. Right, babe? There was a time where Angie 
I'm telling you, we got married 28 years ago this past Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Most of it common law, but it's okay. But anyway, we got married. She got pregnant like right away. And we went to a old school, Doug, you know, old school Baptist church where I know people were like, And I was praying, oh, God, please don't let this baby be premature. <laughs> For the love of God, no. I was really worried about what people would think if the baby arrived nine months or less after the wedding. But thank God it came at 11 months. <laughs> but she got pregnant and nursing. And while she's nursing, she gets pregnant with him. So she drops Brooke from nursing, nurses him. Then while she's nursing him, she gets pregnant with Marcus. And so she drops him and starts nursing Marcus. And he stopped nursing probably about two years ago. <laughs> the baby boy. But it seemed like the first seven or eight years you were either pregnant or nursing. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. I was out saving the world. Not a very good job, but thank you. Thank you. Ladies, it's a gift. If you make a mistake and you get pregnant, we're not going to judge you. We're not going to criticize you. We're going to love on you. But there's only one option. Let us love on that baby. Let us love on that baby just like we're going to love on you. No condemnation. We're just going to do it. This is what we need to tell our young girls. The number one group of girls that are committing abortions or doing abortions are 20s, in their 20s. Almost half. Almost half of all girls, half of all women that are doing abortions are in their 20s. We need to, we need to, we need to teach them and tell them, Hey, because the church has got a pretty bad rep right now. Even though we're anti-abortion and we're pretty dogmatic about it, we're not anti-girls. <laughs> well, you're not pro-life, you're pro-birth. I'm like, what? They kind of go together. Okay, pro-birth, we're pro-birth. What are you going to do with the kids that you have that you can't afford? I'm like, well, guess so. we'll take care of them. I mean, is that a good excuse? How about you stop having irresponsible behavior <laughs> and prevent the pregnancy? Hello. Just a thought. Can't have an abortion unless you get pregnant. Hello, right? We, we, you know, we need to educate, yes. But we also need to encourage girls. There's no condemnation. After the initial scolding, shed a few tears. It's going to be okay. Hey, I'm right there. I was the seventh pregnancy of my biological mom, the seventh pregnancy. And they were all back to back to back to back. Somebody says she really liked men. I'm like, apparently. Back to back, I kid you not, back to back to back to back. But she made a choice. Instead of doing the unthinkable, she gave me away. Just like Joshebed. Joshebed didn't give Moses away. She just said, God, I don't know what's going to happen. Pray with me as we pray for women, as we pray and prepare to be a voice for the millions of voiceless children that aren't given an opportunity to breathe God's air, for the young ladies that have rob themselves of the, of the gift of life, of nurturing a human. And what a, what a unique and wonderful bond that a woman has with her child. I've seen it. I see it here. I've seen it my entire life. I have seen nurturing, caring, loving moms turn into ravenous bears when you mess with their kids. 
There's a reason for that. They appreciate life and the life that they cradled and they brought into this world. Please stand with me, every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we thank you, Father. We thank you for life. We thank you, Father, for this precious gift of life that you've given us on this planet. It's tough, God. It's rough. And so many of us, oh, it's just been rough. These young girls that are getting pregnant and choosing to end their pregnancies, they don't know. Maybe they're being pressured. Maybe they feel like it's going to disrupt their life, and it is. <laughs> but Father, motherhood has to be one of the most rewarding attributes of a woman. What I see women do on a daily basis with their children all they do is love and nurture and care and they do whatever needs to happen to care for their children be with our land father they don't know their rage is demonic their rage is, is inhumane. They'd rather save puppies than babies. Or eagle's eggs, or owl's eggs, or any animal in the, on the endangered list. Except for babies. There's no outrage for babies. Father, it's warped, it's messed up. Help us to be the beacon of hope for young girls that we come across. These organizations here in Ellis County that help young girls financially and otherwise. Father, the media is not going to help us get the word out. I don't even care about the media. We, the church, need to be nurturing to these young girls, encouraging loving, no condemnation, no judgment, but only embracing, hey, we'll help you with your baby. We'll help you with the formula and the diapers. It's what we're supposed to do. We spend a lot of money on so, much, so, so many other things. Why not diapers? Make it easier for these little girls that seem hopeless. But Father, that's a precious life. Their DNA is unique to only them. Their fingerprints unique to only them. Help us as a church, Father, to at least be the beacon of hope for our area, for our community. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this.